right side of the dirt this morning. <laughs> uh, you can't wake up dead. No. All right, boys, first Woke off, up dead. Was our audio, was our audio all right? Everybody How's tell us, audio? can you hear? I would try to be quieter. I know I'm always too loud. No. I'm sorry. I need to be louder. You're going to calm down. It's not so much that you need to be quieter. I think we need to be, Johnny's me and Baxter need to be is louder. A hot. <laughs> Mayor You're damn right it's hot. Good morning. Good morning to the fill button. Oh, yes. We were just talking about, uh, uh, you know, the, strange things people say. That is, the cinnamon is right. The, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's always a good cinnamon. But sometimes but, you're just like, I will kill you. <laughs> Especially if you haven't had coffee. It's just over the top. Yeah. It's Where, like the... <laughs> yeah. No. Well, I was going to say, you're working hard or you're hardly working. Hardly if I working. hear somebody say that to me uh -huh. one more time, I might just make some Good morning, you're fellas. How about that um, pack? Oh, yeah. Oh, how about the pack? Yeah, dude. Thank God Final it just four. wasn't Duke. Can we say that? Can we safely say? I yeah. agree. I, I, you know, I'm I like the old boys over in Chapel Hill, but if I'm, I got to take my pick between State and Duke. And I'm, you know. My grandma's a big stuff. Duke fan, so I feel like I almost have to go Duke. But I've got people all in my family that it's like divisive. Is that no. the word? Right? No. Divisive, yeah. Only, only one who's divisive is, uh, we killed Baxter a long time ago. Uh, he's, yeah. He's dead. Buried him out back. You ever seen Pet Cemetery? Um, no. Uh, but <laughs> it's usually me and Sean on the live streams. He, he has a teaching thing at a school because he's respectable. He has, has, you know. He is. He's not degrees, like us. He's not like has us. Has papers. Um, so, uh, yeah. Monday morning, just me and Sean. But, um, he's around. We got to give the shout out to Mayor McCheese. For the cheese and the Lomo and the sour uh, soda bread. Sorry, not sour bread. Soda bread. Soda bread. Which I saw, I think I saw my Instagram showed me, you said to cut it thick. We kind of learned that the hard way because we cut it before before that. And I <laughs> I was sort of MIA off of Instagram yesterday, so yes. didn't mean to leave all your messages unread. But, um, man, good we stuff. Did. The cheese was awesome. I kind of want to know what the yellow, do we know what the yellow one was called? I don't know what the old Sean's a blue thought. cheese fanatic, but the, I, yeah, I thought cheese. the yellow one was awesome. Dude, the blue cheese um, is the bomb. I was like, so what? But in the cut, I'm pretty darn impressed with the cutting board. Oh, the cutting board? Dude. Whenever you told me you made that, I was like, Young Whoa. Cheddar. That was Young Cheddar. Young Cheddar. That's my but, uh, stage name. <laughs> <laughs> Young Cheddar. <laughs> Young Cheddar. So, anyways. We love Mayor McCheese. He's <laughs> Sean went AWOL, no fatigues near, today. That's, I know. He's out. <laughs> I almost did, and then I was like, I better swap A little swap surplus it Sean taking a break, like, taking oh. the day off. Now, but, um, that German coat I need to wear. Next Wednesday, I'll wear that thing. Y'all dig it. Okay, wait a minute. Correct flowers. I, anytime people are trying to decide, I feel like we have to help them. Um, 70th anniversary broadcaster, custom shop or production line. If you can swing the custom shop, do the custom shop. Yes. Um, the surrender what's up um the production one is cool but i'm gonna think surrender and you need to you need to do that because wow um, the production one is cool uh but i think the custom shop one and specifically the master built one god whoa and i don't even think you have to go that far you know what i mean i think you whoa. i think there's a big enough jump from production to custom shop that, that it's like worth it master built it's like you know Whatever. I mean, yeah. they were awesome too. But I think you get a like ridiculous good guitar just going on. I know. Vincent, we got Vincent's broadcaster. In. Well, if you could get that one, but Woo. you can't. You probably can't get that. I, I don't know. Oh, you can. boys. You look like, at the Vincent. Get, get it. Um, you want to talk about that thing? Was Vincent sat down whenever he went to build that, and he said, "Let me just remind everybody who the hell I so am." He, he dusted off his shoulders. Oh yeah, he's like, and got to work. <laughs> Excuse me, Dale Wilson. Excuse me, other people. <laughs> and now he's leaving That's Fender and is. starting his own career. No, <laughs> it's Vincent, That's... Dale, other people. No, I'm kidding. We love we Levi, that, David. Boy, like, what, what, what point do you think a master builder is incentivized to go start their own thing? Or like, rather than stay at Fender? Well. Like, at what point do you get famous enough as a master builder? You know? It, it's got to kind of be like a band, right? Because everybody, everybody goes through the phases where they get seven year itch, right? So... And I, Dave Brule in his book talks about this whenever he went to go do the Queens of the Stone Age thing and he played drums, right? I assume for a master builder or any builder in general, you get to a point where you are probably tired of cutting T and S style guitars and you're like, man, I would love to make 
whatever something it might different. Be. Yes. I mean, you know, I yeah, mean, sure. and a good example is uh, Ron Thorne. You know, you look at what he was building at Thorne Guitars compared to Fender, very different. So, ask John Cruz. <laughs> I can't. John Cruz is a bit of a different, uh, different situation. Yeah. I didn't say you just you. I said when you decide to leave, yes. Tinder, not when you're ousted. Yes. Um, okay. Tornado warnings in Florida. Be safe if you're in Florida. Roll Tide. Very I can't. Safe. I'm not okay with that. I can't. Can't get on board with that. I'm sorry. Um, good morning, Tom. Uh, oh yeah. Just catching up. Uh, someone said they got the Hod Eights. It got the Jeff Beck Custom Shop pickups are a little lackluster for me. What what pickups are in that? I think I know the answer to this question. But what do you know? What pickups are in there? Um, Good question. I bought a set of Jeff Beck pickups one time and did not like them. Dude, I was watching a Jeff <laughs> um, Beck clip the other day of him playing. I think it was a broadcaster, a telly, one of the two, and that man was tearing it up. Made me want to go learn some Jeff Beck songs. Here's an interesting question, from Tom. Tom um, Beatty, because mm -hmm. I got it right. Beatty? Beatty? No, I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I said it wrong for the longest time. Um, <laughs> how do you learn about the different master builders? Some vids we have seen talk like the guys are legends, but I've not heard of them. Okay, so I think the first sort of the crop, like the John English kind of guys, and then later, yeah. you know, John Cruz, sort of became their own, like, legends. Um, I don't know how. I mean, you just have to go research on, online, I suppose. But if you want to learn about the master builders now, right? Go to Fender, not, not Fender.com, FenderCustomShop.com. Look in the guide. It'll say download the guide. Download it. It'll give you all the current master builders. Um, that's not enough to really get to know. I mean, it gives you a little blur. But then go to Instagram. They all have an Instagram. They all have an Instagram account. And so if you're interested, well, I say almost all. Um, but especially like the younger guys who are newer that you might not know as much about, that's probably the best way to get to know them because you get kind of their personal... Yeah. vibe and their style and, and you know we have customers who talk to them as yeah. they're building their guitar on Instagram the whole time which is kind of cool yeah um, and with that being said too that you know if you do yeah. start one of those relationships use it sparingly you know they're very oh, yeah. busy guys don't, just know, to say like I know um, some some people tend to get just a little overzealous with it's, that it's that's easy all. to abuse the privilege it is yes <laughs> and they but uh, there you go yeah you know. that's the site right there Derek's got it pulled up for us uh, they you know and if you ever have any questions Feel free to call well, us as well, and yeah. we can, you know, we know all these guys and their work, and we can know, give you great examples of them. Some of the ones that have been around a while, you know, you can kind of point to things they've done. Like, Yuri kind of tends to do the, like, you know, not relics, but, like, crazy, like, the Fabergé egg guitar, you know what yeah, I mean, and stuff yeah. like that. Um, he does the stuff that is almost more of, like, an art piece. You know, and, like, Dell Wilson is just, makes probably some of the best necks yeah. I've ever I mean, you know, they all kind of have things that they are, I think, is their thing. I mean, I don't know that anybody does the relic thing better than Vincent at the moment. They entreat uh, the Danish dynamo, they call him. No, they don't call him that. <laughs> but wouldn't that be great? I'm going to start that. Um, but, yeah. Um, ah, okay, Mary McCheese says he oh, cringes. I saw. He let it rip. Every time. <laughs> Every time. I love it. Uh, How would you match a builder? This is another, I, I feel like I'm going to answer this because I feel like it's a good, valid question. How would you match a builder to a buyer? That's what I do like most of the time yeah. when we're not making ridiculous videos is I'm working with people who want to spec out guitars. Um, man, I just, I, you know, it, it's really simple. You know, most of the time they have a buyer in mind. But, you know, if they say... You know, I want the dirtiest, nastiest relic you've ever seen, you know, and then they pick Yuri. I'm going to be like, yeah, maybe he's not your dude. <laughs> you know, yeah. so so just from what I know and what I've seen of the guitars they build, when someone, if someone doesn't know, if they don't have a builder that they're, like, sentimentally attached to for some reason. Um, and, and you'd be surprised. People have, like, different builders they want for all sorts of reasons. Um, but, um, you know... I just like like if you describe the guitar you want for me and what you want the most important things, I just kind of try to think through who who does what what I think they really excel at because they're all good builders. You know, it's yeah. not like you're going to get a bad a, a, yeah. a bad one, right? But I think some of them excel at different things better. Do, you know, like maybe the like I said, if the relic's really important to you, or yeah. you know, a neck shape, or like you know, you want weird wiring. Would yeah. you want your guitar to do some weird thing? I mean, you know, there's just. 
That's it. And yeah. I, I just, it's as simple as just kind of paying attention to what they build and what they seem to get excited about. Yeah. What their best guitars seem to be like. That, that I think, yeah. gives you a clue to what, you know, yeah. what they like. Because if you get a builder who's like doing a thing they're passionate about, that's when I think it's the best guitar. Well, you know, I talked to a guy the other day about this and more so just overall Fender Custom Shop. He, he was concerned about neck shapes, right? And he had narrowed it down to about three. And this goes to building out guitars, whether it's a master builder or whether it's just, you know, building out a guitar in general. Uh, he was down to three neck shapes. They were all somewhat similar. I think he wanted, he was between a 1056V, a 57 soft V, and then like some kind of larger C from the 50s era, right? Uh, and he was worried that he's going to get something that he's going to hate. And I broke it to him. I said, man, I'll be honest with you. They, they've never made a guitar that I hated or like I touched the neck and I was like, ugh, no, I could never. It's like, it's pretty, it's pretty great all around, I think. I don't think you can go wrong. I think you would just find, oh, man, I like this for these reasons and then I like that for these reasons. If they're you're down to three neck shapes and they're in the same ballpark, you Yes. It's not, you know, and well, you, you don't want to say that to people when they're spending so much money. Yeah. It's not going to matter. And I don't mean it's not going to matter. Like, like uh, you're going to, yeah. they're all cool. Right? They're all going to be great. Yes. And the same thing with master builders. They're all going to be great just for different reasons. And there may be a specialized reason for that. So you couldn't really go wrong with any of the guys, I don't think. I think they're all extremely talented. Um, let's see. Uh, okay. So are they the same prices? Pretty much all the master builders are the same prices, right? So the only time the price changes for the master builders, there are a handful that Fender calls their sort of premier builders, the premium builders, out of the master builders. They're a hair, they're a bit more. There's only three or four of those. Two of them aren't even taking new orders because they're waitlisted yeah. so long right now. So um, for the most part, they're the same. Um, ha Hot eight, uh, yeah, that's the ones that I've tried, the noiseless ones forever ago. I didn't like them. I thought lackluster is a very good description. <laughs> Um, I actually have Fat 60s, uh, hand wound Fat 60s in my Strat right now, and I love it. Um, so I think that's a good, a good choice. That's what my Strat um, had, and I kind of almost regret swapping out the neck and middle. It's let's pretty good. Uh, Maverick Cheese says, how much do these builders shape their own necks? More than you think, man. Um, you can tell when you get them in because the, like, you know, it's not like they throw them in a machine and it spits out a large C. Like, if we got a large C from three different master builders, They'd all be different. Do you, yes. do you know what I mean? So like they, yeah. yeah. I mean they're actually shaping their necks, and they're they're sort of unique. Yes. Um, I mean they're within certain parameters, right? Like just so that you can order a large C or whatever with comp or fifty seven soft V. But yeah. you can tell differences in the feel and like the shoulders and things on the different master builders a bit when when you play them. Yeah. Even on the that's true though. Even on the. Um, the, the team built, you know, the custom built now. Um, and then I don't know who's doing it on the custom built, but in theory, you're, mm. you're the master builders are doing that. They're actually. all gonna have a slight different fit and finish because they are, you know, they're hand making them down to that point, yeah. you know, at least for the next shapes and the bodies and stuff. And some master builders, they take the time to even still pin round out all of their bodies. So, you know, that's that to me is a part of that craftsmanship. Same way with the next, they got their own little signature on it, you know, in that right. That is right. You're Woodrow's uh, twin. I am kind of Woodrow's twin. It's true. I'm the I'm the more homely of us. He's he's good looking. Shops want to show off, boys? We got some new custom shops over there. Oh yeah. Uh, let's see. I don't know what is the what is the neck on that. The you're talking about the pink one with the the um, humbucker in the neck. I mean, God, that thing is sexy. Boom. It might Look be a 57 thing. soft V. Look at this. Green. Oof. That's pretty. Show these ones, Sean? Yeah. yeah, you can bust anything out. Yeah, these are all guitars that are going up soon. Didn't build them out, doing the inventory. Oh, this one. That thing is nice, dude. Look at that pick guard. Tom, the um, the Gibson Custom Shops are like a whole different. They're just different, right? It's like it's not as custom in the Gibson Custom Shop. Do you know what I mean? Um, oh, that black one, Mighty Woodger, I think that is a large C, but I wouldn't swear to it. The, to the black with the humbucker? Mm -hmm. I want to say that might be a 51U. It's oh. a big old neck. Is it that big? It's pretty, it's it's pretty, pretty big. big. Maybe so. I, um, um, I was blown away. <laughs> no, not really. I'm pretty sure it's a 51U, though. Um, but yeah, but like I was saying, the Gibson Custom Shop, man, it's, it's, it's not as custom, honestly. Like, those are like the top tier... But it's not like you can, I mean, you can ask for, um, 
you know, you can go pick out your top and that kind of stuff. But they're not like shaping necks for you. There's not like all these different necks. You know, if you get a 59 reissue, it's going to have what they are calling their 50s neck at the time. If you get a 60s, it's going to have the slim taper. Um, you know, you can't mix and match. Like we could order a, with the, from Fender, you know, if we wanted to do a guitar and call it a, you know, like start with the base model as a, a 69 Strat, you know, with a big headstock, but then put a 51U neck shape on it. We, you know, you can do that. And then if we wanted to take it and put a, you know, a 56 Strat pickup in the bridge and, you know, a hot uh, Texas, overwound Texas special hand wound in the middle and then, you know, a 69 in the neck, we could do, I mean, you know, you could do whatever you want for the most part, especially relative to Gibson in the Fender Custom Shop. So that's kind of, they said that guitar is the same color as your skin, Sean. I know, I need to get out of the sun. <laughs> Dude, I tan like a mofo. I just I haven't too. been able to get out much. I, you know, wintertime got me. Wintertime got me, Tom. Come on. I'll show you my redneck tan, though. So he says the telly body is worn. It is. is it? Yeah, the neck is clean. Maybe you just can't see the neck good. It's pretty, uh, it's got the old wear. Maybe somebody just scrubbed it down. Like scrubbed that. it down. I like that exposed pickup. I would take that whole pick guard off. Go full raw dog. Mm. That could be kind of cool, actually. You know, the only problem with that, Derek, is there's probably a stamp right here that oh, says relic. Yep, and it's got a V. Mm -hmm. That's right. Show it off. Show it Show off. Show it off. Let people know. Show it off. So, That's right. There you go. Surrender. Um, we'll see you back soon. Surrender real quick. Oh, before he goes. It, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Surrender sent me a harmonic percolator for my birthday. What an amazing person. Thank you so much. And oh, my God. He sent me a pair of tights. He did, and we we're going to do a video on that. I think we just got to find the right guitar. That's what we're waiting on. What guitar and what song you want Johnny to demo that at the Neon Rooster? Pour some sugar. No, yeah, it's got to be, it's got to be, it's got to be spandex worthy, you know? I mean, you can pair it with DRS. I feel like I'm going to wear, like, a fishnet shirt, you know, a la, like, old school slash, like, you know, fishnet shirt. Surrenders, rock and roll, spandex pants. If you do um, that, then I'll show up like, uh, I'll do, I'll be flea. I'll be your flea with just sock. a sock. Just a man with a sock. Yeah. Just a man with a sock. <laughs> uh, has Fender, uh, has Custom Shop ever done unique shapes? Or are you limited to the classic Fender body shapes? Well, you can do some weird things, but you're talking master belt and you're talking like a lot of money. Um, we did a, um, what was that guitar? It was like a P-Bass body with basically Tele pickups. Um, and it. I forget, something was different about the neck too and the headstock. But, you know, and like, I mean, they're not like a, you can't like send them some weird thing and be like, I want this guitar that's shaped like Texas. Yeah, you I can. Mean, I mean, you, <laughs> yeah, you can. It's a dream factory. <laughs> Maybe. Um, but, you know, you can do a lot. You're not... You sort of limited the things Fender has made in the past, you know. But you can you can do some pretty creative things. Um, I, I'm kind of with Mary McCheese on this. Creating a new body or headstock shape that looks good is next to impossible. It's really hard, um, just because I think we have such a just a it's like so thing in our brain, now, right? yeah, yeah. Like, of like what a guitar headstock is supposed to look like. Seventy years. Um, every time I, I mean, well, I won't say every time, but so many times I see new ones where people were trying to be wild and out of the box, and just like, oh, yeah, kill it with fire, abomination. What? Um, okay, I don't want to be too negative. I was gonna say, what do you think the worst headstock is? What? <laughs> what is your? What is I, I your will tell you what I think. The, I'll headstock. tell you what I think the worst is. Go ahead. Um, and these are expensive guitars. Can I guess what you're gonna say? I, I doubt you get it, but you can. Bigsby. No, no, no. The worst is the James Tyler. Pull up James Tyler, like the Strat style headstock. Um, James Tyler is going to cry. Thanks for the happy care. birthday wishes. He's going to cry into piles of money if you know I what his guitar cost. Um, it's going to be fine. And then we will talk about the McCready Strat Todd H. Um, James Tyler. I need, I need a head shot. Head head stock shot. 
There we go. I'm going to say that's the worst. That's pretty bad. It's like you didn't even try. Well, the name thing I don't like either. That's, I hate the name thing, but I just hate the shape in every way. Yeah, it's a little, um, little too... But I just hate it. It's kind of like he got to the end and said, you know what? Screw this headstock. I'm going to bed. Look at this one, Johnny. Here we go. There's some rough ones. <laughs> I mean, you can obviously see hmm. the uh, the inspiration. Uh, well, yeah. and, and these people's first, you know, so like definitely, definitely Fender no, took they, some inspiration no, there. That's um, a classic, classic instrument. And he <laughs> and he was working with with Leah, um, so there Leah. you go. But I'm not saying they're not cool guitars, uh, Genera. They're awesome guitars, and I maybe even would play one in a studio. <laughs> but I just I don't know. And Dan Huff is amazing. If you guys haven't listened to Dan Huff play, if you haven't listened to his band Giant. Um, man, go check it out. It's really good. Have you listened to that, any of that stuff? Mm -mm. Like any of the Dan Huff studio stuff? Or, I mean, like, you have because he's played on all sort of things. Um, but his ba the band that you probably could hear him the most and know it's Dan Huff is, is giant. He's a real um, Steve Lukather, huh? He's a real Steve Lukather. Also a great player. Maybe not everyone's thing. Um, <laughs> um, I had to. Nothing against the Luth. Oh, how do you say and he, that man holds a grudge. You better uh, pray he never hears this. Listen, song. brother, I'm just joking. You'll never you. work in this listen, town. I know. Um, listen, don't don't smite me. I'm just joking. Don't forget his I'm work. I'm joking. Don't I know that it. you played Don't Beat It. Shut your mouth, right, Sean. I respect it. You played my You're favorite part. You're opening this can of worms. You know, it's almost like that. Uh... That's it. We're demonetized. Um, I ain't afraid of no ghost. Boston makes me feel good. Ooh, ooh. Um, <laughs> hey, y'all want to have a good, good after stream song to listen to? Go listen, and this comes from Zach Person. Me and Bex were talking about this. Zach shared this to us. The song called "Gasms." Gasms. It's by Smokey Robinson. Okay. Okay. All right. It's amazing. <laughs> Do yourself a favor and listen to that here in a bit. It's worth it. Gasms. Uh, let's see, Jonathan, is that telly a relic ice blue? This this telly that I'm holding is more green. That is kind of like a... It's like an olive green. Maybe yeah, green. yeah. Olive green. Or army green. Um, I'm not sure what Fender... Derek said navy it. green. <laughs> army green. Okay. Army green, um, green. Mary McChee says the Leo, the Fender headstocks are cre like traditional creation shapes. I could see that. I mean, that's kind of cool, actually. You know. Hmm. Especially if he, you know, if he was... Open about it. I think that's kind of fun. Yes, um, let's talk about. Oh, uh, I got my head stuck too. The uh, no offense, sorry, D Angelico. It's, too it's pretty rough. It's pretty. It's gaudy. too gaudy for me. Um, it's pretty gaudy. The little little tip on the top, you know, the little gold piece. I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah, I know. Especially the fact that it didn't do anything. Like if that was like if you turn that for the trust ride, that'd be oh, cool. that'd be amazing. But, um, if you're like, not. Um, but anyways. Um, uh, Mike McCready Strat, go, Sean. What's not to love? What do you want to know? We played it. We Except played for it. Sean hates Pearl Jam. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jeremy <laughs> Spoken. Um, no, I mean, good morning, Jack. Guys. Mr. Jack Stowe. Jack has been, uh, basically... His his the the automotive like school that he he runs. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Oh god, I got caught in my uh, the magnet got caught to the back of the plate. That probably sounded weird. Um, they have been basically redoing a car for Ohms, who, you know, who lost all his stuff in the Maui fire and about to send it over, and it looks like man, pretty fantastic. Not like they you guys, I mean, first of all, that's just an awesome thing to do. But the fact that you guys did it, figured it out. Send that thing over to Hawaii. Shipped it to Hawaii. That's I don't the know if they shipped yet, but they've worked it out. With GM, I think, is helping a bit. General Motors. Um, That's insane, dude. I can't like it is insane. Shit, like shipping guitars out of the country is a little annoying. Shipping a car, I can only assume, is a task. Like that has to be something, something fierce, dude. Well, Jack, I love Jack because Jack is one of those dudes. Derek is like this. You're kind of like this, Sean. I feel like you just get something in your brain and you just get it done. Doesn't matter how you do it, you just get it done. You just um, get it done, and that that is awesome. So, anyways, it's that just amazing. I couldn't let that uh, couldn't oh, let that pass without mentioning it. Um, pretty pretty wild. If you look at know, that, 
If you want to know where they get the Saint for St. Louis, it's Jack. It's Jack Stowe. Yeah, it's Jack Stowe. Kansas City, baby. It's true. So, you know. But anyways, Jack, you're awesome. Um, <laughs> Ryan, see? He was thinking James Tyler also. But anyways, yeah. Mike McCready Strat, I, I don't think he can go wrong. Um, there's been a few guitars over the years. Like, we said this about the American Originals. They were almost like custom shop light. Like, you know, getting into custom shop kind of stuff. I don't know that that's totally true for the Mike McCready you know, made Mexico thing, but like the relic looks great. They feel very good. They well, sound very good. Well, I, I, go ahead. I, I think a few that we've gotten in have had a little high action. That's a setup thing. That's, right. that's easily tweakable. Ain't done a little bit of horsepower can't see. I would play the crap out of the Mike McCree strap. <laughs> the Made in Mexico one, whenever I picked it up, it reminded me of my American original right nope. away. There uh, you go. And you know, those, those guitars are phenomenal. I think it's priced well. I think it plays very well. We don't have one in stock, so I'm not saying this to sell you one. It's more so just if you were really wanting one, jump on it because they are they're pretty damn good. I'm impressed. All right, hold on. Sorry. I'm sorry we missed we must have missed it the first time. Muddy H2O says, Hey guys, I'll try again. Speaking of next, what does the fifty four soft V they seem to be putting on a lot of the new fifties custom shops feel like compared to the ten fifty six and fifty six seven? Soft V's. I don't know that I've touched a lot of the new 54 Soft V's, well, to be, be honest, totally honest. Doing the photos on them, obviously I pick them up, and like I said a minute ago, anytime I'm doing photos, I'm going to play the damn thing for a minute at well, least, just for fun. Um, Which ones do we have that are the 54 Soft V's? We have, we had, we've had four of them so far. Okay. They're next door. You, uh, the one... Sometimes you, I pick them up and I don't, I don't always one. go look. Which you one? played one. The, uh, it's the Relic 54 Strat on the wall. All the way in that top right corner. Sunburst? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Wide fade. It uh I mean to to kind of explain the differences between that. It's a little bigger than the fifty seven. Yes. I would consider it like the soft V, but definitely bigger. Like it just has an accentuated feel. Well, cause like my my that red sparkle telly that I have is um which you're about to see in a magnetone baby and video, by the way. Um it's got a fifty seven soft V. And it's not a small neck, but it's not like crazy chunky. Like to me, it's kind of just right. Um, the 54 is a little, it feels a lot like it, but it's a little chunkier. 1056, in my opinion, you can feel the V a little more. You know what I mean? Um, yes. The V is a little more pronounced. On a lot of the 57 soft Vs, man, and, and I guess probably the 54s too, like yeah. you can feel the V like right here, and then it kind of. It's gone by the time you hit the fifth fret. Yeah. yeah. I mean, then it's so, just a, you know, a really comfy neck. But it feels um, great. Even with the V, like, it. It's so. It's nice. You know. They're all nice. That's the they're problem. all nice. But so that's, you know, it, it, essentially, my initial take is a, a lot like the 57, just a little chunkier. And we're not talking mm -hmm. like 51U, like mm -hmm. chunky. No. We're talking just, just a little bigger. bit more. Um, What's funny is, too, whenever we went to the Asheville Guitar Show, uh, that guitar had just showed up. We go up there and we actually touch a real 54 hardtail, and the neck was pretty spot on. Really? I was, I was actually kind of like, I was in shock, you know? I was like, oh. Well, listen, I think, and Gibson, I think, is still a little bad about this. Um, for a while, it seemed like the neck shapes, whether you're talking like 50s Fender Custom Shop stuff or Gibson stuff, were almost like caricatures. <laughs> it was like they took the idea of what those were and like made them big and almost unrealistic, right? And I think the trend lately has been smaller necks. There's still some that are chunky, but they're not like absurd. You know what I mean? They feel a lot more like what those real old guitars. You think that's true, Sean? You yeah. think I'm just imagining that? No, I think you're right on the money with that, man. And then so. the, the same thing, like we've talked about this before, whenever you play some vintage Fenders and vintage Gibsons, you, you might be very surprised by what the necks actually felt like. I know on that SG that I've got, you would not anticipate that for a mid-60s guitar, mid to late 60s guitar. You grab the neck and it's like... If you've just played reissues, right? Yes, like, you know, because yeah. they yeah. always make the reissues on Gibsons like... That Nothing. that wide and the neck is actually wide, but it's narrower than right. they make them. I was like, oh, I didn't expect that at all. And playing it, I, I love it. It's a great feeling neck, but I've never played a Gibson model that is that felt like yes, that. exactly. Um, um, I, I yeah, no, I think yeah. that's I think that's true. Well, and I feel like Fender's way better about it. Go ahead. Which well, think? like Mayor McCheese said, a lot of people think they don't like the bigger necks, but if you played one for a week, I, I, yeah. 
I think almost anyone. Small hands, big hands, little hands, fat hands, thin hands. I think if you tried one. And again, I'm not talking like obscene. I'm talking like pleasantly chunky. I can make so many horrible, um, yeah. you know, but I'm not. I'm going to keep it clean. Um, um, <laughs> but I, I think you would decide that you liked, you liked it and it felt really good and comfortable. It, you've heard this probably more <laughs> than I even have. Guys who come through and they're like, oh, I got small hands. I can't. It's really, I don't think it matters all that much. I think we, you know, over time, we, you find that out. Um, some, I remember I was doing a lesson once and somebody told me, they said, well, you're only good because your hands are so big. I was like, it yes, wouldn't be that I played hours and hours and hours yeah. every day just to become aggressively mediocre. Dude, you, you know? can like, find amazing, like, virtuoso players with, like, tiny, fat, tiny, fat sausage. Fingers. Like that, uh, somebody, I was watching somebody talk about this the other day. It might have been Gary Clark Jr. on Joe Rogan, and he talked about um, Red Volkert. He's got, his fingers look like they're about that big and they're this big around. <laughs> And that's a hoss of a man, but good God, he flies on a telly, you know? So, yeah, I don't think it matters. If it mattered, then mandolin players would all have to have these tiny little hands, and they don't. Um, so there you go. Dog boy, I'm going to answer your question. I'm going to answer it politely. Whenever you say 0.5% of us can afford these custom shops, I consider that to be a bit of a farce. They are expensive. They are. But what I will say is there's... You know, for one, there's different ways to pay for them. There's different ways to make money and save up for them. I'm somebody, you might call an asshole for this, but I work four jobs. You know, at one point I did work four jobs. I've been able to dial it back a bit because we've done better. But, well, but I mean, you know. what I'm getting at yeah. is I set my mind to stuff like that. And if you want it, you can get it. You know what I mean? Is it expensive? Yes, but you can go and work at a guitar shop and figure it out. It, it, well, yeah, you There's, absolutely get a muse. Derek watches the used market, and he could sit I'm here. He's on reverb right now. He's on reverb. He's going to throw out prices that you'll probably be a little blown away by. Here, here's here's the thing, right? You don't need a Fender Custom Shop. Like, you can be a great player. You can play. You can mm -hmm. love guitar, and you don't have to have a Fender Custom Shop or a Gibson Custom Shop or anything else for that matter. You could go play Harley Benton's and be a great, I mean, whatever, right? But if you do prioritize that and you want that, People prioritize all sorts of dumb things. I know people without two nickels to rub together, and they got thou multiple thousand dollar bows. You know, yes, that they shoot in the targets of deer, and maybe at a yep. deer once a year because that's what they love. Or you know a crazy I mean? stereo system yeah. in their car. You know, you know? It, it, bows, guns, fishing rods, like all oh, stereo systems. There's oh, all sorts of things, right? So, you know, um, I always think it's funny that people judge guitars by like, are you a real working musician or whatever? I mean. Yeah. Everyone's got a hobby. You don't have to spend crazy money in your hobby. No. I, Lord knows I would not have the custom shops that I have if it had not been for working, working in guitar shop. shops. And then know? also um, working your ass off as a musician to like afford well, it. You know? It's like Sean said, you know, like I work here really three days a week, honestly. And uh, gig, you know, I, I don't have a weekend day for the next three months that is not that have one or two gigs. Yeah. And I, you know, I don't do all of them for, because I just want to go play it, you know, and so-and-so's bar or whatever. I mean, I'm, you know, so yeah. I make money, but you can, you can absolutely, if you want them, they do it. 2300 bucks, cheaper than, that's you know. cheaper than an American ultra right now. And I mean, you know, I, I get it. And like Jonathan said, there's, there's definitely factors that go to it as to how much time you want to put into this what sure. you, you know and that doesn't mean it you can be a pro musician one of when everyone out to nashville but and this has been years ago now jonathan's got a buddy who Bob. plays a made in mexico telly and has his whole time in nashville and i've got plenty of buddies like that I, and then i have buddies in nashville who have like 20 like boutique all high-end yeah. guitars you know one of my best friends was a lefty and so, yeah, he always just had, exactly. you know, a Mexican telly and a, like, a, maybe, a, he might have, it might be American strap, but yeah, nothing crazy. Um, you know, and if, hey, if that's not your thing, or maybe your thing is friggin' ESPs, or maybe it's Custom Shop Jacksons, or maybe it's whatever, it doesn't matter. It's just yes. playing and having fun. But, you know, exactly. if you really, if you really think you need one, you want one. Yeah. There's, there's ways to go about it. There, when um, there's a will, there's a way. That's how I view it. And the only reason why I say that is because I don't think... I, I used to have a sentiment that was very much like that, and then as I've grown, I kind of feel like I, I came to the realization that it's okay. It's okay to go out and, you know, either A, work real hard and get it, or decide that you don't need it in general.
Dog Boy says he owns 27 guitars. So he just thinks the custom shops are a ripoff. Hey, that's fine. You know. That's fine. I think they're some of the best guitars I've ever played. Um, but that that's such a personal thing, too. Absolutely, know? yeah. Um, I mean, I would never play an LTD or ESP or anything like that, but also that's I not what I, I like. I never would, but I, I, yeah, I don't have any desire. I would that. never. I would <laughs> never. Uh, what is the highest price custom shop you have ever sold? I mean, there's been a handful of those $20,000 like special edition you know, things that are like uh, artist reproductions that we've sold. Um, Joe Strummer. The Joe the Strummer. Violin. How much was the violin? That yeah, the Uri violin. I don't. It might have been over that, right? That was thirty k. Um, thirty k, baby. <laughs> Dog boys still at it. Of course, we say that we're selling. Of yeah. course, say buy it. That's You're true. selling. Sure, whatever you want to hear. You could believe that. That's fine. Um, I mean, you know, it's a valid point. Um, yeah, whatever. Sure. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I mean, we've sold you know twenty, thirty thousand dollar custom shops. Those aren't typical though, right? Those are just like the special, or like the, you know, the Jerry Garcia alligator thing, or like um, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, hey, so. teach their own. Um, you just feel like they're massively overpriced. Sure. I think all guitars are getting a little. I mean, all guitars yeah. are sort of getting overpriced, yeah. to be honest. I mean, that's, that is a, dis yeah. uh, a disturbing trend. Don't get me wrong, I'd love it if they were like $2,000. <laughs> But I'd love it too if I didn't, you know, have to spend eighty dollars to fill up my gas tank right now. God, seriously, yeah, I mean, that's you know, true. Hell, that is very, very, very true. <laughs> bring them, bring them. You that's probably true. feel the same way about vehicles, though, right? Like, because you you drive older vehicles. Yeah. That are, you know, some people are into like having a new Mustang or a new Camaro, yeah. like a car that. Oh, they, yeah. All the way. I mean, for me, it was like cars. See, stuff I like care that. less about that stuff. Yeah. Like you know, I just want my car to run. I do like having a truck. Yeah. But my truck's twenty, not twenty years old, but it's fourteen, fifteen years old. Yeah. But, um, I was gonna say, for me, the reason why I own older vehicles, for one, it's the obviously the ease of access to them and the affordability, but I can work on all my cars, so that's what I appreciate about them. Yeah, dude. I mean. You absolutely are entitled to your opinion, dog boy. No, yeah, dude. no, no offense oh, yeah, taken. No, we're good, um, man. Eh, I'd say there's quality at all prices. I don't know if it's unbelievable at all prices, but it's quality. Yeah, um, I mean, there's definitely quality at the lower end. The lower end is bumping. The high. lower end are the best they've ever been. You can go buy a two hundred dollar guitar now that is leaps and bounds above what you could have bought a while ago. That's true. Uh, you know, ten years ago, fifteen years ago, twenty years ago. Um, so yeah. Um, now, someone asked what the time frame on custom shops were now. Man, we've been getting some back, and I hate to even say this, honestly, because I don't want your expectations to be um, too high, but we've got some back in four months, which means they must have started it, like, the day that we ordered it. Now, I would be concerned if I got those guitars back and I felt like they weren't as good, but they've actually been really, really good. Because sometimes, you know, my, my concern would be, Things are slow, and then they rush to get them out, right? Yes. Um, but every one of those guitars I've gotten in like four months, the guys have been like, "My." When we ship, they've all been for customers, right? They're not shop stock. Like you know, these are ones we're ordering for for a customer. I thought they were great guitars, and then the customers have sent me emails saying, "You know, I, I sort of love this." Um, so I think you could realistically get one in six months. Now I say that. And there are still some that are taking 10 months, eight months. Yeah. So I think it probably depends on like what, I'm sure the custom shop has a schedule that we don't quite, are not privy to, like what they're building when. So it's probably if you order it and it happens just right in that schedule, like we ordered a thin line telly and they're set up and they're building, they're, you know, making thin line telly bodies. Bam, there you go. You know, you gotta jump on it. Yeah. I don't know that. I'm, that's just my guess, right? That's just conjecture on my part. But, um, yeah, you could get one anywhere from four months. I'd say a year is probably on the far end. Now, master builders are a different thing. All the master, most of the master builders are a year and a half, couple years out. Um, a few of them are maybe slightly less than that. But I think, um, oddly enough, with things slowing down, I think I've done more master builds lately than it than than you know. I think there's a point where. Things are expensive enough. The the economy slowing down. People who buy them doesn't matter. 
<laughs> Again, conjecture on my part, but that's just what I see. Um, so there you go. I like it. Yeah, you know. They're neat. They do a good job. Dog boy, I'm interested in what your 30 year old strat that is irreplaceable is. Was it an American standard? The like, what was Japanese it? made one, maybe? Maybe. Those are cool, you know? Um, Cheaper guitars are. You want to tell people you know. what we were up to till. Let, okay. So we were at the Neon Rooster till like 1 o'clock mm -hmm. in the morning. Oh, yeah. This this morning, I suppose. Yeah. Um, dude, I'm kind of excited. It's going to be good. About these videos. So. Got some live band action for the demos. No more Fender Tone Master tracks for, for Johnny. Um, but one is the Wayland Jennings tell you. Speaking of expensive custom shops, $25,000 custom shop. They only made 50. The leather tooling on it is made by the dude who actually did Wayland's. You get the matching strap. Part of me was thinking, ah, that's ridiculous for that guitar. But then I got to play it last night. I'm not saying I could spend twenty five thousand dollars on it, but yeah. you feel real. When I turned on the phaser and we started wow. playing friggin' "Are You Sure Hank Done It This Way," <laughs> which is so cliche, but it was the most fun I've had in a while. It was pretty um, awesome. It so, sounded great. Take one sounded great. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, take one. no, take one was the one. Um, we had great time doing that, right, uh, Derek? Has got it dialed in over there, man, between Derek and Sean. That's right. Cool camera That's angles. Fine. I think the sound was great when we listened back. But then we also set up the new, we got the new Baby M80s from Magneton. Now, um, that, I mean, I knew it was going to be good. That's a pretty surprising amp. Yeah. 12 watts, man, it's probably all most people would ever need. It, it sounded fantastic. Um, it sounded really fantastic, mic'd up. Um, yeah. It's not really like the small amp thing because it was loud as balls, but... Um, it sounded great though. I mean, if you it sounded, it, yeah. it did the small amp thing, mic'd like it was awesome yeah. sounding mic. I video is straight in, no pedals on it. Um, we were using the little head and cab. I think the combo. I'm I'm really excited to try the combo as well. I think the combo is going to be cool. Uh, man, if you had that little combo in that little row case, dude. That's the dynamite combo. Right dude, there. I want the mini stack. <laughs> I'd go with a little mini stack. That'd be sick. And having all those things lit up. What, what? Okay, question for you. All right. You guys can weigh in. The head, okay, head and two calves, mm -hmm. or the combo in one of those calves. You do the same thing. Give me the head and two calves. I Just because I, I wanted to be silly. I, I want to be say. silly. <laughs> you know how that goes. Um, but man, 12 watts, pretty amazing. Yeah. Oh. It is. It was very loud. In, Dog boy, thank way. you. Thank you. We You're appreciate that yeah, greatly. Um, yeah. yeah. You guys, we don't mind when people disagree yeah, with us. Yeah, no, it's like, perfectly fine, dude. Yeah. I, I want to <laughs> put that out there. You're good. Like, um, don't sweat that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, you know, I talk, you're just saying your opinion. I mean, obviously, yes. there's a way to be an asshole about it. Plenty of people do that. Yes. But we don't mind don't genuine... Think, yeah, I don't think you were you know, even you're being that. Yes. There, oh, my God. You should... Dude, yeah, we get into some Sometimes we get into some things. That's because we're like family. We... we Love the, each other, but we talk I, a lot of junk sometimes. Uh. Well, I was gonna say, I was talking to somebody the other day about a blue voodoo, actually, and it's uh, it's weird that you bring it up as well. I forgot who it was. we were talking about last night. Is that, yeah, and we were talking about the the Sammy H Hagar red. That's Rocker right. Version. That's what it was. I was like, I used to want one so voodoo? bad, like I could taste it. Never had one, but um, yeah. Heck yeah. Oh man, have I had a chance to play the Lucky Dogs? I still have not, but I still follow Anthony. Um, but I am. One day I'm gonna go. I'm going to Cleveland, um, <laughs> and he's knocking on his door. <laughs> Anthony, no, I, no, I'll be in Cleveland in June, actually. Um, so maybe I'll just kind of try to make some time to go over, go over there. Um, but yeah, because my dude Robbie Cummings that I play for lives in Cleveland, where Anthony builds the Lucky Dogs, um, right there outside of uh, Chattanooga, and then we're doing some shows um, right outside Nashville, and then Derek and I, and maybe Sean too. We don't know. We haven't figured it out yet. But for sure me and then some combination of these these guys are going to Nashville and hanging out with our buddy Jack um, at the Gibson Garage trying out some guitars. So, um, yeah, that's pretty, right. pretty, pretty cool. Pretty fun. Um, pretty cool. The uh, 
I was gonna say another uh, just speaking on boutique things that I'm super into right now, like with this Lucky Dog thing. There's this guy named I think it's Ben Wazer, something like that. Let me pull it up. I'll shoot it over to Derek. This guy makes these things called shafts. Shafts. They're beautiful. Let me see. While you're sending that, uh, Hot Eight says yes. The Magnol Baby is my next one. I, man, I don't think that's a bad choice at all. Did we show these before the shafts? Oh, did we lose the stream? No! I think... I got you already, brother. It's coming soon. Okay. Whoa. Heat, baby. That looks like Johnny Look at there. right there. It does. I mean, that is kind of sexy. I think mean, everything about it is similar. If we've shown them before, I'm sorry, but they are, uh, they're phenomenal. I keep seeing them online. I'm like, damn. Yes, that guy's I, I did them in Cleveland, it. Tennessee, by the way. Um... Sean, Sean showing his shaft. We have some of the three. I mean, I hadn't listened to his stuff in a long time, um, but for a while I was listening to him a lot. Uh, the Bride of Frank. <laughs> yeah. My Bride of Frank is, uh, unfortunately, the gray has set in. It's spreading everywhere. A demo video, video that's not so melancholy. Yeah, I'm sort of with you. That's true. Uh, hello to my favorite in South Carolina. Wait. No, we're in, we're in North Roy. Carolina. But we are in southern North Carolina, so you're close. close. Uh, in fact, I live like yeah. five, 10 minutes, 15 minutes maybe from South Carolina. That's right. Um, we go to south of the border all the time. Yeah. We call it we call it our bender weekends. We go all out. Yeah. Let it fly. By the crow's nest, baby. There you go. Any Touch road crabs in that beard. Oh. Some things we don't talk about on the, on the live stream. Um, <laughs> Don't talk about the crabs. <laughs> but yeah, anyways. Those, how'd you find those guitars, Sean? Just looking on Instagram or? Yeah, I think it just yeah. popped up in my feed and I was like, whoa, that's cool. But you've never played one, right? Nope. No. No. So I might hate it, but I think I dig it. It looks cool. I just like the, the style. I'm gonna try and hit that guy up and just see if, you know, I'd love to do a video for him or something. It'd be kind of neat. I, I still, that would be really cool. I want to get my hands, and I've actually talked to this guy on Instagram. I want to get my hands on a Josh Williams Mockingbird. We've talked about that too. He's got some other models that look awesome too. Um, really, any of them. But uh, ooh, an ice cream shop in Cowpens, South Carolina. I know where that is. Um, I don't know where the ice cream shop is. I, I, I see Cowpens though sometimes. Uh, any thoughts on cream guitars? I don't know. Well, you know about cream guitars? I feel like I've heard of them. I don't. I like I do too, but I don't know. Too. I don't know enough about. Maybe if I saw them. Instagram or something. Um, you know. Come on, Sean McKenzie. We'd like to see you. We'd like to see everybody. What do you think, at, since we're on Boutique Guitars, what do you think of the new Echo Parks? They're super cool. Yeah. Um, we they, did that demo video. I, I didn't even think about it. We haven't talked about that on the live stream, really. <laughs> Where we were all jamming. We're all yes. sitting around jamming. Uh, someone, uh, the comments are pretty funny on that. Um, but they're definitely way different than any we've had like like yes. this batch and it's kind of cool that they're all sort of the same theme yes kind of thing right well and they all um, and they still have their own character but they all have like a sonically there's a lot of crossover which well, i dig I, you might look at them and think they're all the same but they all have different pickup combinations yes. and like controls and wiring um yeah i i was super impressed by these the original bench that we got i thought was good but these were like Amazing. These these made me really reconsider it a lot. I was like, wow. Let's see. Thanks, guys. Gibson makes an Explorer like that as well, the Clapman Cut Explorer. I'd be into that. Um, very cool. Um, how much of you guys mess with Reverend Jetstream? I got a Jetstream. I'm surprised how many people don't talk about how cool they are. I like the Reverend stuff. I would love to try a Reverend. What is it called? The um, what's Greg Cox? 
the oh the the gristle the gristle master or right. something like that or the gristle whatever is gristle it? caster master something like that some yeah I love that they're good. tellies and they're like what are they, like five percent bigger because he's <laughs> such a big dude I think that that's fantastic um I'd love to have that next to the Cory Wong because it's five percent smaller <laughs> and just be like well, oh my god. god um every reverend I played I thought sounded good felt good I got a ton of friends who have sort of switched over and they all play reverend reverends um. I think the East Siders look awesome. I think the um, the one that looks like the Gretsch, uh, what's the dude from Dwight Yoko's band? Um, the Pete Anderson models look really cool. The double agent, I mean, I don't know, they all look cool. Um, yeah, I'm a fan. I, I don't know why you don't hear more uh, about them. Um, because I, I think they're really solid lot. guitars. Yeah. yeah, I think they are very, don't take this the wrong way. I think they're very like utilitarian guitars. Like they're just built, and sometimes, because guitar players are fickle, dumb people. <laughs> um, we overlook things like that. That makes sense. Yes. You know, in favor of, like, weird old, like, sexy things. You know yes. what I mean? Um, and I think sometimes, unfortunately, Reverend gets caught in that. Um, I agree. I feel like they almost get pigeonholed, and I say this respectfully, they get pigeonholed in the same place that some of the PRS SE stuff gets in, where it's right. like people just see it and they're like, ah, oh, whatever. You know, and I'm like, ah, oh, it's like really good. Even I like though they're, the they're really good guitars. They're and amazing. Same thing. And, and the SEs are only getting better, honestly. Yes. Um, I think people stuff. have caught on to that thing thanks to like the Silver Sky and stuff, honestly. The Silver, SE, Sky Silver Sky and the DGT probably are the two biggest ones. That, and, and you know, yes. they're, I just watched a video last night where their PRS is doing the thing where they're sort of like moving their the S2 pickups down to the SEs, and now the S2s are getting the American made, the Maryland pickups, which, which is pretty darn cool. Um, Back to the Reverend. Do you remember when Reverend made amps? Mm. They made like a couple amps for a while, and apparently they were really good. And I never got the chance to play one. That I'd like to find one of those. I don't think they make them anymore. But they had like a, like a they were named after snakes or something. I don't remember. But anyways, I think they were the same company. Um, I feel like the, for me at least, Reverend and Yamaha also are living in the same world right now. Somebody had talked about the Revstar in there, and I I own a Revstar. I dig yeah. that. You know, in the same way. I think it probably gets set to the side because it's like, oh, okay, whatever. It's not, you know, a vintage thing. It's more. Well, again, in we now. just we and it takes something for like it takes a while for a guitar like that to build its own little like mythos where you can connect to it. Because I think and then like like when you get a player like Chris Buck who's playing something like a Rev Star, it starts to have that yes. right. And in some weird way, Greg Cock is like an amazing player. He's not quite cool enough to give like the Reverend thing what? like its own mythos. You know what I mean? Because he's kind of like zany and wow, and he talks funny. Um, and I love Greg Cock now. Um, God, if I could just switch, if it would be like, man, you can play like anybody. Greg Cock would be on my short list. Um, but, you know, I just I don't know that he's as popular right now. But maybe. I mean, I'm Reverend's around to stay, I think. They've got their own little spot in the market. Um, so, there you go. Ooh, Jack says, Sean, if you want to use my Air Sonic, I never played anymore. Air Sonic? Let's look into that. I'm not sure what that is. An Air Sonic. I'm ignorant on this one. I need to know. I'm going to get into the know on it. We'll check it out. All sorts of funny things. Uh, Emerald Retro Guitar Rolling re Synth Ready All Carbon. Real cool. Huh. Okay. That's kind of fun. Um, but yeah. It's a Reverend. Okay. Yeah. Let me try that out. That'd be something neat. Todd Roy says if he could play like anybody, it would be Danish Pete. Oh, another good choice. There's so many good choices. I Man, I think I Who would. Who you want to play with? Like, if I could take like Chris Buck's finger work, I would love to do that. Like if I could like patchwork my playing together. Yeah. I'd love to be able to go between that and then some of the weirder stuff that I like to do, like closer to a Johnny Green. What if I could combine those two things, have the soulfulness yet the industriousness? That would be neat. Be kind of fun. So, there you go. We overheard this morning. A gentleman came into the shop before we opened. <laughs> He's talking about Mark Knopfler tone. What would you classify Mark Knopfler tone as? I, I think he's got good tone. I just also, I don't know. I just think of him as being like the chameleon in a lot of ways. Chameleon-like, you know? I think he has two tones. He's got the, like, fingers onto a strat. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. compressed strat. Quack, you know what I mean? The yeah. salt and the swing tone, right? Which is all, all over, like, you know, some of the other, like, slower ballady things. 
Then he's got the Les Paul, Money for Nothing. Money for Nothing is a weird example, but you know, he's got that kind of thing going. To me, though, I don't know. I mean, he's got great tone. Nafo does, but it all to me it all comes from his style, like his the finger yeah. thing, and it's more about the cool phrase that he does because you know when you do it just your fingers, you get that thumb to your finger roll on not on the same string like you yeah. would pick on on adjacent strings or not. Yeah. I was gonna say I think that's why maybe I think it's funny now to think about it more. Is like I consider his tone to be literally his claw hammer thing that he does or whatever, right? His little claw picking thing. Yeah, you know. Um, so that's that's kind of cool, um, but but I mean yeah you know I mean I love old Mark Knopfler. Uh, someone said, would the members of Casino ever play in a band together? We kind of do on Tuesdays in a weird way. I, yeah, we I had a guest. We had two guest drummers last night. One was Roland J Beckerman. The other one you'll have to just wait and see in the video. <laughs> you'll have to just wait with <laughs> bated breath. Um, no, we I, we all like to play together. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, we uh, we've been jamming on Tuesdays mostly. Derek on pedal steel, and uh, you know me and Sean play guitar, and random other musicians coming over um, that might you know we've talked about. There's a chance for that to kind of turn into something. Yeah. Um, we've talked about doing certain events. It just you know I think all of us are pressed for time sometimes. But yeah. we've also talked about doing some like uh, like tribute kind of shows. Like we talked about doing maybe like a Tom Petty show, which would be all of us, all four of us involved. Um, you know, with some different folks. So, you know, um, there you go. Does Casino have any local guitar shop groupies? Oh, yes. Yes, yes we do. Um, <laughs> Baxter, Baxter is actually a very good singer. Yes. I don't yeah. know if you believe it. He would he, is, he would um, be Tom Petty in this He would be Tom scenario. Petty. It would be split, um, I think, between you and him taking turns singing different I, stuff. Because your think, voice fits I, I think, in Well, things. sort of, but I think Baxter can do it. Like, oh. can do it, do it. Be Tom Petty. So, you know, um, there you go. What do you think? A bass player in a band I was in had a Hagstrom guitar. I don't know how I feel about Hagstrom guitars, to be honest. Baxter's got an old Hagstrom hanging right over here somewhere. Somewhere. Uh, it's somewhere. Oh, it's over there. Um, but, uh, oh, no, it's up behind you there. Is it? There it is, yeah. Okay. Well, one of them. Um, He's got another one over there. He's a They're Hagstrom everywhere. collector. And I think that came from like a... Um, <coughs> from a... Uh, the Elvis thing, right? Yeah. Like seeing Elvis play one. Yeah. But, I don't know. Um, Jack Stowe, we, we have, we've talked about Casino Bandcamp, you know? Um, we may have a casino event where we open it up to the public, come down and hang, and we do a show. That's not, I don't know if you guys heard Derek, but, you know, we've talked about events where we have, like, a show, and it's open to the public, and whoever wants you could come. That would be really fun. Um, do we have an acoustic room? You never know. We hate acoustic guitars. Hate them. Don't even think they should don't exist. Even think about it. Uh, no, actually, we have a really nice acoustic room <laughs> um, <laughs> with lots it's, of it's, guitars. It's, it's it's down a hallway. It doesn't sound as cool as it is for me explaining it. But then it goes into like this little sort of cavern. And there's a separate room with the Martins. Um, no, we actually have a really big acoustic section. Um, that is a lot of fun to play in. Uh, the acoustic guitars sound great in there. And then, I don't know if you've seen our newest back room where the, the PRSs are. I think we're going to try to have some higher end, maybe like the loud ones and some, some stuff. But yeah, if you, if you check on Instagram, you'll, you'll see it. Um, but no, we, we've got a pretty good selection. We've got a ton of Taylor guitars. Um, That's right. We've got a fair amount of Martins. Yeah. The Martins are a little harder to like get in stock and keep. They take a little longer sometimes, yeah. but um, they usually go very quickly once. We and do certain that. ones, when we get them, they never stay around. You know, like D twenty eights don't stay around. Um, a lot of times, even like D thirty five stuff like that. You know, yeah, people are like right. waiting on them. You know, um, yeah. so um, and not the Taylors move well too. It's just Taylors like a machine, man. They they roll them out um, in a good way. So that's it. That is our acoustic room but but lots lots of fun acoustic room stuff in the back um taylor's are for sissies <laughs> taylor's have their place we can neither um, confirm nor deny <laughs> they have their place um john w777 oh, yeah. says the acoustic room at casino is drill worthy i think it is pretty cool the guild is amazing uh, the mighty woodrow we have a guild right now that it has brazilian rosewood back inside um, first first built from this coma factory 
Um, really cool guitar. Apparently, yeah. it was a giveaway at NAMM that year, right, Derek? Uh, Merlefest. 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 Merlefest that year, um, yeah. which is cool. <laughs> I would never. I love that you remember that. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> and you're not wrong, Mary McCheese. Nazareth only moves at one speed. It's their speed. That's right. And they don't give two you know what about what you think <laughs> um, or what you want. You know, okay, Dog Boy, this is interesting. I would have agreed with you 10 years ago. Um, until maybe fairly recently. Because until recently, the only acoustic guitar, and this is crazy, right? The only, I will say the only nice acoustic guitars I've ever owned were Taylor's. Because mm -hmm. when I was growing up in the late 90s, like playing guitar, Taylor was like, oh my God. It was and it was weird to even see one in the wild. Like I never even saw them around. Yeah, I, I'd drive yeah. to Charlotte or like Monroe and like look at Taylors and yeah. be amazed. Until I finally found one after I moved to Charleston in a pawn shop, and the dude joked that I gave him everything. I traded him everything I owned, but my girlfriend, who is my wife now, um, which she thought was funny, and I I sort of took as a weird backgammon <laughs> um, offense, but whatever. Um, and I I got this Taylor from a pawn shop in Charleston, and. Uh, Man, that was a great guitar. It was like a 98-310 CE. Um, and it was just a 300 series. But the Martins right now, if you hadn't played a brand yeah. new Martin in a while, dude, they're they're just, a double they're just o, good. A double O 28. I don't care which dreams. one. A double O, a triple care. O, a D18, a D28. And I'm not talking about like the crazy, you know, I mean, the 37 Authentic is stupid uh -oh. good. Like, but, but you know, oh, it's out of reach boy. for a lot of people. Um, I'm talking just the regular old reimagined, you know, the D28, which they're not cheap guitars. But God, they're good. The 15 series, triple O 15, the double O 15, and I know we sell them, but we sell Taylors too. And I'm just saying, oh yeah, you pick those up, and the Taylors do their own thing, and they're great. But the Martins are better than they've been in a long time right now. Yeah, um, I, you know, and there's nothing we've talked about. Tons of stuff like this on the channel where there's no, there's no right or wrong answer. You know, this no. one's better than that one. It's just the Martins right now coming out. Whenever you pick them up, man, it's like you feel. At least I do every time I hold one. I'm like, man, I'm holding a guitar that in 40 years I would still pick it up and be like, wow, that's amazing. And the same thing happens with the Taylors, but it's just a different feeling. Like yeah. I see the Taylors as this really beautiful utilitarian craftsman-made tool. To where the Martins, I'm like, man, that's like. It's like a family member. Todd Roy says the Martins and Taylors are just so expensive. They, they are. Yeah. You know, I do think the best value right now um, is probably those all mahogany, the the any of the 15s. So like, if you like the Dreadnought, a D15. If you like the you know the O's, the yeah. like double O or triple O 15. Um, not that expensive. All solid wood, made at Nazareth. Um, they're they're killer. You know. Um, the Street Masters are sort of the same thing. I don't like them as much, to be honest. Um, they're cool, they, you know. But man, get a get a like a Triple I fifteen or a D fifteen and throw like an Anthem or a K and K or any any decent pickup in it. And man. someone was talking to me the other day, speaking of acoustic pickups, about the, those Mojo Tone, the sound hole pickups. And I am I'm. I'm Anybody in the comments played the Mojo Tone acoustic? I'm not talking about electric. Acoustic pickups. Um, they look pretty awesome. I haven't been in play one yet. Now you got me. You I would, my I would, I would like to. I'd like to try them out. Um, I have a few. Uh, Furch. I don't know how you say that. I've heard of those, um, but I just don't know how you say it. And I love it. They really made something interesting. People are talking about those. I know that um, I think Jeremy the Guitar Hunter, when he was here, he seems to be talking pretty. about those. He likes those a ton. Um, you know, Mark says he has the Triple I Fifteen Streetmaster. Yeah, su super cool guitars, man. Um, yeah. right, we got Loudons too. I see uh, Ryan said that he has an S thirty two C. Loudons are really great. I mean, they're they're pricier. The Loudons are even pricier. But the, the Loudons are like a. They really are sort of their own thing. Yes. Do you know what I mean? They don't do what a Martin does. Yeah. They don't do what a Taylor does. Well, I feel like Baxter kind of nails it with this. Like he. You know, Loudons are kind of like pianos in a weird way, like the way that they uh, like are overtone rich and stuff. And you almost have to want to do a certain play style on it. It'll do anything. Like, don't get me I wrong. I kind of think you do. I think to get yes, to get the, the value most. out of them, you have to be a certain type of player. And Baxter is that kind of player. Yes. His, his style. If you hear him play it, you hear the guitar. For me, I yeah. don't feel like I had to do it justice in just the way that I play. Yeah. Um, 
Yamaha guitar is probably the biggest secret in the guitar world. I don't even know it's a secret. I mean, someone called the other day. I said this in a bit video with Baxter, and they said, they asked, like, they were talking about a guitar we had versus a Yamaha, and they were trying to buy one and not spend a ton of money and get the best thing. And I, I told the dude, I said, man, go buy the Yamaha. <laughs> because the awesome. one we had was a great guitar. Yep. The one we had came with a case, which was kind of a good value. Yeah. But I told him, I was like, man, if you just want the guitar to be the best, the Yamaha wins. And he, you, he, you know, he was in town. He was somewhere where they had the Yamahas. Uh, the other video, the other guitar was one, like I said, we sell. We had mentioned it. Baxter had mentioned it in the video. And, you know, I just told him, man, I, if it was me, I would I'd want the Yamaha. Um, They're good. So I, I think, I mean, I don't know if you saw the video where we played the new um, Pacifica. Pacificas. And obviously those are the sort of higher end ones. So they're a little more expensive, but those were great guitars, man. I'd yeah. play. I, I might would want one of those over a Silver Sky, of course. Silver Sky. I mean, you know, <laughs> they're yeah. I mean, they're. I mean, from what I heard and what I played, I was like, damn, it's pretty good. You know, and I don't know if I buy into the whole the Neve pickup thing. Like yeah. you said, they're almost yeah, too yeah. hi-fi, but that would know. be my only knock on it. But outside of that, I mean, I I'm somebody I think about, you know, the way it feels in my it hand. Felt great. I pickups. love this guy's stainless steel frets. Uh, Mary Richie says the Ibanez acoustics are a great value. I think some of the Ibanez electrics right now are too. I think the like the whole art, uh, what are they called, art core? The hollow body Ibanezes are fantastic. And I think some of the new Ibanez sort of like Tele Strat, more traditional style guitars. Yeah. I've been super impressed by those as well. Yeah. I, I would play any of the Jackson yeah. American soloist stuff that they've been coming out with. I think those are phenomenal too. Just speaking on shred stuff. Todd Roy, I, I agree. Those, those are very utilitarian in a really good way, you know? Yes. Um, so, you know. Uh, Any Tom Petty tribute show would need to include Mike Campbell. Incredible player with Tom for all those years. Yes. That's right. Uh, I, uh, I have to go check him out. I'll say we had a guy bring in the $2,000 Revstar the other day. I was working on it for him. It was giving him some issues. Uh, but what I was impressed with was that it wasn't far off from the Rev Star that I have, which is the $800 one. Like it, quality wise, they're pretty close. The main differences were the finish on the neck, um, the way the pickup sounded. Outside of that, I felt like it was intonated just as well as mine. It played really good, yeah. which isn't a bad thing. Like it, I was like, okay, they give you the same quality all the way down the line. So. Just my take. That, that is an interesting thing, right? Yeah. Like, do we want companies to make the cheaper ones slightly worse just so we feel better? Well, you know? really, the uh, I mean, it had upgraded no. upgraded tuners, <coughs> upgraded electronics, so. and upgraded finish. I guess you would say. But outside of that, everything f felt and played and sounded pretty pretty dead nuts. You know. I mean, sometimes you have to think about like like with build materials and and, and the quality of the materials. Or are they just gonna last longer can you get this thing yeah. that's set up and plays and feels just as good but maybe it won't in 10 years with yeah. the with the higher the, the more expensive one well you know what i mean yeah and I, and I don't i'm not saying that i'm just saying that's the question i think about in my brain like how do you justify the one that's a thousand dollars less or however much less mm. plays and sounds close to as good if not as good yeah it, it's a weird problem if you're a guitar company i think i think about that a lot you know like how do you how do you add value at every tier when you're going up from like sort of starter to middle of the road to kind of high end? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And that, that one was the humbucker one, the same as mine. I have the blue one with the racing stripe on it. Uh, and the one that the gentleman brought in had humbuckers in it. I swapped the pickups in mine, but he, the electronics were better. Like I said, all those things were kind of upgraded. It was great to answer your, answer your question. So Arthur not says, I have two USA Custom Shop Washburn acoustics that sound heavenly. I've played some great Washburn acoustics. That's another brand that I think really flies under the radar. Seems mm -hmm. to me like when I was younger, I saw them a lot. Maybe it was I was I was in different places. And maybe they're just more prevalent in those those places. But um, yeah, I don't feel like you hear very as much about Washburn. You know, they make some really cool cool guitars. Yeah, they're great. Blue Ridge, too, you know, Blue Ridge makes good acoustics. I think Blue Ridge. Every Blue Ridge I've played, I'm gonna be honest, they're just okay. <laughs> they look amazing. 
but I they're just okay. I've I never mean, played one that I thought it blew my socks off. Well, like, like, yeah. For the prices I've seen them at, that's where I'm kind of like. Would I, like I have one and in. enjoy it? Yes. Would I gig with yeah. it? Yes. It looks awesome, but I don't know. I just it doesn't do. You know, I hit them. It just doesn't do the, the thing. What's your favorite acoustic amp or SM57 mic kit? Um, I don't know. Um, I don't typically play acoustic amps. I typically run into the system. But I've gotten I've got that uh, Fishman Platinum Pro EQ. It's the DI, the EQ, and the preamp on one. Um, I think running an acoustic through that or something similar. LR Bags makes the venue DI, all that kind of stuff. That's kind of the, the secret sauce for me if you're gonna if you're gonna play loud acoustic, like not acoustic anymore. Um, there's all these new, there's a new Fishman and a new LR bags that are like um, basically using like IR technology to make it sound a lot more like it's a mic guitar versus just through a DI, you know? And I see That's I'm cool. seeing those in a lot of like um, actual touring guys, acoustic boards. Um, they're pricey, but if you were primarily doing acoustic guitar and you, you know, were plugged in a lot, probably worth it. Um, but they, they sound really good. Um, I think the DR, the LR bags one is called the Voice Print or something like that, and the Fishman one is still the Aura like technology. But it's it's basically what I have with that tone print or not tone print, but the Aura sort of stuff built in. So that is that. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I still sometimes struggle to see the point of acoustic amps. <laughs> um, they're, they're, they're awesome if you're, like I know our buddy Jack, I don't know if Jack is still here. Jack's got a couple of different acoustic amps. Yep. And like his setup at home, you know, he's practicing playing plugged in and I think that's really cool. I think it's cool if you're gonna, use, like if you find your sound with that, you take that to the gig and then that is the direct out to the, to the PA and that's your monitor. I think that's kind of cool. Yeah, but like you know, I play solo acoustic a lot. I have the 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 Turbo Sound Towers that are like the Bose systems, like, and I think they sound great with acoustic guitar. So I just use those. Yeah. And if I ever want to be mic'd at home or or plugged in at home, I just plug in one of those. Yeah, I mean, you know, most most gigs that we've had at the Rooster, you guys just bring in the preamps and run them right into the system. But you know, like you're saying too, if you're playing at home, if you're going out somewhere and you want that as your monitor, it's a great solution. I do think those new Taylor the Circus Seventy Fours sound awesome. Do you need it? Highly debatable. <laughs> but they they sound yeah. great, you know. Um, it's just it's just whether you need it or not. Uh, let's see. Danish Pete upgraded his Martin pickup recently, and it sounded better with the old one. What I wonder what he re upgraded to. There's a pickup that I am ridiculously intrigued about. Um, oh, sweet Jack, which one did you order? Um, I would like to know if you got the um, if you got the Turbo Sound or a Bose or what. Um, but um, the new other bags, I think it's called the Hi-Fi Duet. Mm -hmm. It's got the Hi-Fi thing that sort of works like the k, k You know, it just sticks on the bottom yep. of the, the bridge plate. And they have, in between those two things, they got this little circle looking thing like a thimble. It's a microphone they've developed. Yep. It sits in there and then you can blend the mic sound. And it's supposed to be like super anti-feedback. Sean likes that. The friggin' clips of it. And so nothing is under saddle, you know? Yeah. And there's a battery. There's a battery for the preamp in it, but the if it sounds half as good as the, videos. As the like YouTube yeah. videos on our bags, I mean it sounds like an acoustic guitar. You know what I mean? And then I'm sure you run that through like a direct box with some EQ on it, where you can really shape it. Oh. Sounds like we got to put one in a Triple O Twenty Eight. Is what it sounds like to me. I would. I got one if we needed boom, to experiment. Boom. Yes. They're they're you know they're not crazy expensive. They're like yeah. you know. I think you buy one. Let's do it. I'll do it. In there. I'm telling you that new little fishman yeah. with my my triple O rocking. I, I I did I kind of took the the old triple O twenty eight. This is two thousand sixteen, and that's that's been I, again. I all my acoustic gigs I've been doing are Taylor's playing that Martin. Look at him now, Whew. man. Living it's good. It. It's good. Um, um, ooh, hey casino crew. seismic audio. Oh, I think that's there. cool, Jack. I think I don't. I think all that tower technology is so good right now. I, I don't know that. I think the only place that you find the more expensive ones, I mean, there might be a slight better sound quality, but I think really it's taking it apart and moving it, like the Harbingers and that kind of stuff, wear out probably quicker. Yeah. I, I would be my guess, I right? 
Because, I mean, I, I don't know. I've heard some of the more expensive ones sound great. So we'll see. Right. Jen um, or I wanted to know some of our hobbies that we they wouldn't expect us to have. We don't have time for hobbies. Gut and hog for Johnny. That's not a hobby, Derek. That's a way of That's life. That's a way of life. Way of life, hoss. <laughs> um, My family does butcher a fair amount of hogs. And sometimes I, 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 I'm I not too hands-on with it these days. I'm kind of a, 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 a casual observer slash taste tester. Um that's kind but of where I, yeah. It's still a lot of fun. Because that's like a thing. If you've never if you've never been around like a big farm family where you like sort of process some of your own, yep. you know, Do you livestock. Um, that's true. It's not a quick process, you know what I mean? Um, no. Especially when you're talking about a five or six hundred pound like, like. Yeah. Well, between that, you and you um, and I grew up similar with stuff like that. For yeah. us, it was like, you know, we busted wood because we had wood heaters in a bunch yeah, of houses. Same, same, so you know. we did a lot of that. And, um you know, just there's always something to do on the weekends. You know, I feel like that's you're in the same same exact boat where the weekend comes around and there's always some somebody's got some project, somebody's building something, or you know, I grew up like that, and, and you did too, right? Yeah. And you, you just always your family's got something going on, and like yes. like uh, you know, our family's always like doing things. You know what I mean? Like uh, e- even when I was a kid, like uh, my my dad is one of like twelve kids. Yeah. Man, like my grandfather's house that he lived in growing up, and all of these buildings on his farm. He went to South Carolina and bought this old three-story uh, cotton gin. Mm. You know, like the building, tore it down, used all that wooden tin, built his house. After their house had burned down, that now there's an old barn behind it. Yeah, they rebuilt it as a barn. Built his house, totally built the whole thing. Built all these outbuildings, built some of my aunts and uncles' houses around yeah. the field that was the core of his farm back then. And they just did it all by hand, you know. And I remember, like, my first cousin, who was my best friend growing up, we built him and his dad and his brother a house. We all, all the uncles and, you know, we all built it. And yeah. um, I remember sleeping in it the first night when it was done, you know what I mean, uh, with my, my cousin. That was, But so, like, still, there's just constant yeah. things like that. And some of them are just... For something to do. Well, I was gonna say, yeah, like we <laughs> you know? we do all kinds of stuff. We're helping our sisters. Or helping our sisters, there you go. Um, which is good. But I mean, you know, like my dad's got a little, you know, my dad's still a farmer. He, uh, they got a little stand. They, for a while, they sold produce produce out of. Now it's just kind of a hangout. We call it stand. But you know, on a wild hair, a few months ago, he decided he wanted to put one of those old, you know, just wood stoves in the back and close that in, so we'd have somewhere to sit and like cook potatoes on top of. <laughs> And so we, you know, yeah. they did it. They, we tended in. They bricked that part up. We had the old stove that we pulled out of this old house. We built a chimney, 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 chimney. chimney. However you say that word. Um, and now it's kind of awesome. That's right. So, yeah. but those are I know. Yeah. Those, I guess those kind of hobbies, right? Yeah, that's <laughs> what I. You know, for us growing up, same thing. There was not really like, you know, and especially around the time I turned like sixteen. That's all we did i knew weekends would come yeah. up and i'd work at the shop i'd actually skip school to go work at the boat shop and then you know spend all weekend doing whatever the hell my grandfather whatever. had schemed up whether that's you know oh we're gonna go and cut a path in here and you know put up some corn feeders or turn around and yep. go down to the coast and build a whole entire shed over top of his shed because yeah. it rains like a motherfucker <laughs> we built a whole roof over like a whole new tin roof over top of another roof. But yeah, exactly. Stuff like that. And, you know, yeah. we all just get together and talk junk and drink beer. I mean, I played a lot of sports growing up. My kids, my, my son, you know, does that. I've coached his, his, like, baseball and soccer teams and that kind of stuff. Um, you know, I feel like Derek has cool hobbies. Right. But they're not really even hobbies either because, like, the camera stuff, he obviously does yeah. here for work as well. I, I feel like we are all fortunate that we have figured out a way to, like, uh, eke out a living doing the things that would be our hobbies you yes. know what i mean whether that's guitar or camera stuff video stuff um yeah. baxter same is the same you know yeah. what i mean i mean baxter likes uh video games i don't know if he ever has time to actually play them yeah. <laughs> i mean we, we like, both like to read like nerdy science fiction and fantasy yeah. baxter and i love um you yeah. know like the dune stuff we talk about the dune stuff but you know yeah i get into like antiquey stuff which is weird. Like I like old typewriters, like fixing fixing stuff up like that and repairing it and figuring out how it works. Film cameras. Um, let's see. Stuff. Robbie is telling us about Mike Campbell. Fantastic info. 
I was joking because I love I love Mike Campbell. In fact, I own one of Mike Campbell's old Magneton amps that I bought. I love that he gave so. you the whole rundown um, of like it's. That's, that's a fantastic. Awesome. Yeah, that's a great um, like short paragraph of like, hey, here's Mike Campbell. If you didn't know about done. Mike Campbell, and I appreciate that greatly. Um, he got everything in there. He's you, like Boys of Summer. You, but I talk about Boys. I I like play Boys of Summer for my child. I'm like, listen, that's Mike Campbell wrote this. Um, but and Tom Petty didn't really want it, and he thank God because he gave it down Hilly. But whatever. Um. On the amp that I have that I bought from the reverb, my wife actually bought for me from, from uh, Mike Campbell's reverb sale. It's got DK scratched into the top, where I think is was his setting. So I'm thinking that he maybe used this old Magaton some with the dirty knobs, at least the recording stuff. I, I don't know. But um, anyways, I Mike Campbell is one of my like guitar heroes. I love Mike Campbell. Um, and I love Tom Petty. In fact, that is a Tom Petty... That is, uh, you can stand me up at the gates of hell and I won't back down. That's my <laughs> pointer my finger too, by the way. <laughs> so, you you know. shouldn't have told him. You should have made him. All I right, sight read him. it right now and tell me what it is. Oh, my God. Well, there's no lines. So you can't really sight read it. You don't need the lines. That's what it is. That's what it is. Um, you yeah. don't need so lines. I love, I, love, uh, I love old Mike Campbell. Um, in fact, we did a video not too, well, it's been with maybe a few years ago. Why is Mike Campbell so cool? Um... And he actually reshared it, which was very exciting for me. So go check that out if you hadn't. And I don't think I even mentioned the Darian Hobbs, which people put in the comments because we, well, I mean, you know, we were talking more about history stuff. I think the Fleetwood Mac um, stuff is really, really cool. I just, I think that the like Stevie Nicks relationship with Tom Payne and the Heartbreakers was really fun, um, you know, and from the documentaries and stuff. So pretty cool, pretty darn cool. Um, Mike definitely is a hoss. Jen Rye is right. And a big hoss, dude. Big hoss. I mean... He's got big hoss energy. He's kind of a the perfect sort of like guitar player in a band, if, if you think about it. I mean, he just, he just kind of is. You can't imagine any of those songs without his guitar parts, really. You know? Thank you. Um, and they, they, make, they just make the songs better. It's, it's a rare guitar player who always makes the song better. Um, but there's a few that do it. And he's one. He's towards the top of the list, in my opinion. That might be about it, boys. I think so. We went long today. Whew. And and didn't say much. I <laughs> just answered questions. But I like it. Doesn't Johnny have a pig farm? I do not have a pig farm. Um, it's I in the mail. Lots of family members who raise pigs. Hogs, they would call them. Um, and so, yeah. So we, you know, they butcher them all through the fall. Um, just about every Saturday, sometimes more, depending on how many um, there are. Hogs being turned into various, you know, tasty treats. Um, and yeah, like I said, I, I go whenever I can and help out. Um, my dad does have like 40 cows, um, but mostly he's a chicken farm. Um, and then lots of random things they, they grow. But when I grew up, my, my, my papa, I called him, my um, grandfather, Grew all sorts of stuff. To tobacco way back when, but I was never around for that. That was kind of over by the time I came along. So, but you know, any any of the other stuff, I was I was there for pretty much anything you can imagine. So, there you go. Um, but yeah, you guys are awesome. Donna Hogfire. <laughs> hey, you could disappear in a, a pig full of uh, or a pen full of hogs. It would be easy to do. Easy. So there you go. Um, there you go. You guys have a great rest of the day. Oh, yes. Thanks for hanging out with us. Heck yeah. We'll do it again. Do it. You got to take it back. Dang it. I haven't told you. It was Hit a one-time like. thing. Hit subscribe. Hit the bell. We'll see you next time. Bye.